Auzubillahiminashaitanirajim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim My dear community members, Assalamu Alaikum Recently, the Sijni community lost an individual who, in my opinion, had devoted their life since coming to the U.S. towards the service of Sijni and this wonderful community. He never asked for any accolades or demanded we appreciate his services. You could tell community service was in his blood. He did not do it for mine or your pleasure. He did it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. That individual is none other than Marhum Saftar Ali Hashim. Please kindly recite a Surah Fatiha for the Marhum. I distinctively remember my first time as a nominated member under Uncle Ghulam Dinanda's committee where Marhum was the joint Mukhi and Marhum Agulshan by Hashem was the chair lady. I recall how seamlessly they would work with each other. How friendly they were, how respectful they were, like a well-oiled machine. And above all, they were doing it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can honestly tell you firsthand that doing such community work is not easy. It really takes a toll on you. The frustrations that come with the task, sometimes it just gets too much. But when I look back at how Saftal Uncle and Gushan Auntie handled it, it was never without a smile, ever. Maybe because they knew it was for no one's pleasure but Allah's. As we pray for Saftar Uncle and Gushan Auntie to be granted an elevated place amongst the chosen ones, let us also pray that we be granted with the love of serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, similar to what was in these two individuals' hearts. Let us pray for us to be granted for the fire within and, and for the desire to want to serve, not for the name or praise, but for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please join me in reciting a Surah Fatiha for both of these marhumin, and I will leave you with a few words from the community about Marhum Saftar Ali Hashim. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. Al Fatiha. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. I am thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our Jamaat President, Brother Ali Hassan Ali, to have this opportunity to speak about Marhum Saftar Bai. At Jamaat level, when I was the president of Jamaat some 20 years back, Safdar Bhai was the Mukhi. There is no way that I can fully describe the services Safdar Bhai has provided to our community. He was an efficient, hardworking, sincere and loyal. He was one of a kind. His maintenance and inspection of Husseini Madresa kept us up to date. His care of our center, including carpets, painting, inside and outside, plumbing and electrical appliances deserves a special mention. His guidance to me and the, man and the managing committee during this time was unparalleled. On personal level, he was truly genuine and one of a kind. Personally, his hard work and caring enabled Gulshan Bai to be the chair, chair lady of for more than a dec decade. You can also see his work ethic reflected in his children who have both grown to be exemplary members of the community becoming doctors of pharmacy and business owners. In the early years he had welcomed, hosted and settled many new immigrants who had come to New York and was always offering a helping hand to anyone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
bless Safdar Bhai's soul and granting an elevated place in hereafter. Amen. Start. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Al-Ain Al-Rajeem Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Before I start, I would like us all to join together and please recite a Surah Fatiha for Marhum Safdar Vai and Gulshan Bai Surah Fatiha. It was the year 1972, about 48 years ago, when young men like myself, then, of course, came with dreams and hope in our mind and our hearts, with focus to achieve and be prosperous, and we were going to go to the land of opportunity, USA. America. Yes, I landed and I saw right from the airport as I came towards Queens the wide four lane highways and those tall buildings. Whoa, what a difference from Dar es Salaam in 72 and I said to myself really you're in America wow so we started settling down finding a job and we were struggling hard all of us that first came I was one of them and I struggled very hard and we all did, and we were looking for wealth. We were looking for a home, because we missed back home, missed mom and dad, and the brothers and sisters. And then God listened to our prayers, and he directed us into the home which I would say today, when I look back, was bigger than a huge mansion that you can find in the USA today, although it was only a two bedroom apartment. Why? Because the people that took us in, and myself, were people that had wealth. They were so wealthy. And I don't mean wealth in terms of US dollars, no. Wealth in terms of furniture, no. Wealth in terms of comfort and materialistic things, no. These two people, Safdar and Gulshan, whom I fondly call Babi, they welcomed us into their tiny two-bedroom apartment. Yes, we missed home. And guess what? She would make us a nice home-cooked meal. Kukupaka, biryani, makaya kupaka. She did all that for you. And Safdarbhai was like a big brother. I would remember times we would sit in the living room after a nice meal, three or four of us, and they would sit with us. The room would be filled with laughter and joy. We enjoyed each other's company. That was wealth because now we felt at home. A home-cooked meal and a home environment, they gave it to us. They did. They, we shared their grief, their grief, and they shared our grief. 
in times of difficulty and in times of joy we were there for each other they constantly gave us guidance what to do how to do it how to achieve how to attain your goals what is it that you do to overcome problems they showed us different avenues and I remember distinctly that there were many a times since every all of us came from different backgrounds that some were businessmen some were clerks some would just come out of school looking for an opportunity to enhance their life for themselves and for the family back home I missed one thing dearly since coming from a religious background, I, res I missed reciting majlises and being in a place where majlises were being recited. And Babi said, don't worry, Nisar, you are a mullah, you'll always be a mullah for me and for our family. And she would hold majlises and I would recite majlises there. She taught me hope, hope, don't lose it. It's all there for you. She encouraged me at every turn of my life. And there came a time that I finally said, I need to get engaged. And I moved to Allentown. And when I came here and she would visit us, she had that amazing smile on her face she was so happy just to see us happy me and my wife and she blessed us with her prayers her duas this is the kind of personalities that i dealt with and Safter would always ask me how are you doing is everything all right if there is anything let me know and yes, I went to Husseini Center with all the encouragement, all the nice teachings that she gave us at our very gullible age there. I saw something that astounded me. As I was sitting on a chair in Husseini Center, Safdar comes in with a step ladder and he starts changing the light bulb. And my eyes popped wide open and I said, wow, he illuminated my life. Now he's illuminating the house of the Ahlul Bayt. And I said, mashallah. And then I heard that Bobby was a chair lady for many years in New York and that she did a lot of community services that was her that was him they believed in giving what they had and they were so giving and so forgiving they smiled and kept on Allah loved them so much that he said come back to me for I love you your mind Kalu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. and they left us I pray to Allah, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah grant them maghfira and rahma and give them the proximity of the 14 masumin and give their family who is their son I believe a lot of that lesson which the parents left behind inshallah wa ta'ala fi amanillah al-kareem al-fatiha assalamu alaikum i'd like to say a few words about marhum safta bai hashim who passed away recently marhum safta bai was the embodiment of community service I worked with him in official capacity during the time when I served as treasurer and Marhum was a committee member. I remember him as 
being always eager to help and offer his services in any capacity, even when not an elected or formally appointed committee member. Sardar Bai would volunteer his time and professional services, often at a short notice and often at his own expense. He was also a large member of the community and got on with the young and old alike. He could be found serving water on one day and cleaning after the late night Azadari programs, always working with a smile. Of course, it's true what they say behind every successful man is a woman, and this could not be true of Marhum Safdabai and Marhum Magushanbai, whose own years of tireless devotion to Jamaat cannot be overstated. Their sacrifices and efforts help shape the entire community, and in this way, their legacy will live on for many generations yet. Most recently, I met Marhum at the Kabristan on Ashura Day. He was looking forward to attending programs at the new Lu District Center. We pray that both Marhum Sadabai and Marhum Agushanbai are amongst the Masumin in whose name they gave so much. Let us remember them in the Surah Fatiha Al Fatiha. When Matthew Sijni approached me to speak a few words on behalf of Marhum Safdar Hashem, I took some time to think about the words to use to describe him. Safdar in Arabic means warrior. And when you think about a warrior, you think about someone who's brave, someone who places others ahead of themselves, someone who's a protector, someone who will sacrifice himself for others. That's what Safdar Ankal was. When he came to Jamaat, how many of us remember him in the kitchen? As a muki, as a helper, so selfless. He was there day and night serving our community. And our community could count on him. I remember the days when I was in management and we needed help at the mosque to look at our air conditioning system at Al Husseini. Madrasa and Queens. I remember this man spending days trying to restore the air conditioning service for our community. So selfless. When it came to a personal level, when we needed help with our business that my wife runs, our studio, many a time we needed help with our air conditioning, our heating, and it didn't matter what time of day it was, evening, night, he was there. I remember the time when we had lost electricity and I needed his help just to help me understand where the issues were with our air conditioning. This man through his mobile device guided me towards troubleshooting exactly where the issue was all remotely. There was never a no from him or there was never a situation where we could not overcome when it came to addressing a problem. We have really lost a true gentleman, someone that this community will miss for a very, very long time. I remember the Kebab King evenings. We have a group of people that we always meet up at Kebab King on Friday evenings. Whenever he was there, the gathering was that much more livelier. In all honesty, he was like the life of the party. And never in those gatherings would you find him talking negative about anyone, but instead he would just be positive and just enjoy the time with him. We will miss those evenings. Kabbalah King evenings will never be the same without him. So as we bid farewell to him, let us remember him. Let us remember all the good things that he did for us. And they say when someone leaves, they leave a legacy. And the one legacy that I can think about Safdar Uncle was that our community was always first and foremost to him. And the one parting thought I'll give you as well. Many of you know that I've been involved in sports for our community in many, many ways, especially in support of our youths and our youngsters. And when it came time to finding sponsors for events, he was usually amongst the first people I put on that list. 
And he never, ever said no. When it came to the youths, he always used to tell me, Aziz, tell me what the balance is and you know where to get me. That was Sartre Alka. Let us pray for him and let us pray that may inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him a place amongst the chosen ones. Al-Fatiha. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajeemun. Today I sit here uh, to talk about uh, a great personality and uh, I'm thankful to New York Jamaat for having me uh, speak about Marhum Safdar Ankal, Safdar Hashem, uh, a fatherly figure to myself uh, and a very hard worker who gave his life in serving the community of New York. Uh, I met Safdar Ankal in 1990 and found out that uh, he was related to us uh, through my father, uh, Marhum Anwar Shivji. Uh, they were cousins through the Hemraj family. After my father passed away, uh, I always used to see Safdar Ankal Marhum Agushanati as a parental uh, body, uh, father and motherly figure. And also on my wedding uh, in Toronto, uh, Marhum Agushanati was there. Uh, once we came back from the wedding, the first ceremony in New York was at their residence where Safda uncle and uh, uh, Maruma Gulshananti were the uh, father and mother figures. And after that, uh, whenever I needed any help, any support, any advice, I would call upon Safda uncle who would always encourage me uh, and give me good advice. Uh, also, I served as a joint Mukhi with him for a very long time in New York and uh, whenever needed help at the mosque, uh, be it air conditioning, be it uh, the heating system, be it anything, lighting. Uh, also, I remember, greatly remember this, that, uh, you know, at Sydney we had a shed that was built and uh, after that we had decided to remove the shed. And uh, while we were the joint mukhis over there, we came up with a new shed system in New York, which I think Sydney it's still there and that is Safdar Ankal's doing that you know we put it together. Uh, Safdar Ankal was a very uh, hard working uh, personality always whenever I had any kind of a problem at home anything the first name the first number cell phone or telephone number would come in mind would be Safdar Ankal. Till today I do not believe it that he is gone the last that I met him was when Marhuma Gulshananti passed away. I was not able to attend the funeral due to myself. I was in the hospital in Tampa General. That is when I found out that she passed away and I was not able to attend uh, the, the funeral ceremonies. However, I always wanted to meet Safdar Ankal and uh, before, uh, you know, uh, the, him passing away, we met in New York, where I went to recite Fatiha in the Kabrastan in New Jersey Cemetery. And that is where Safdar Ankal and myself, we met at the Kabrastan and we spoke for a long time. I do not believe it that that was the last time I met him. I spoke to him a couple of times on the phone, but that was it. I did not believe him. Till today, I do not believe it that he's gone. And about a year after Maruma Gulchanati passed away, that he passes away. However, it is a big loss to all of us. Whoever knew Safdar Ankal will attest to this, that it is a big loss to the community in New York and all over, that he was a great man. I take this opportunity to uh, pray to Allah, to grant Marhum Safdar Ankal and Marhuma Gulshananti a place in Jannah and I request you all to please recite Surah Fatiha for Isari Sawab of Marhum Safdar Ankal and Marhuma Gujananti and all Marhumins. Al-Fatiha. Mu'minin and Mu'minat, Assalamu Alaikum. 
I have been asked to say something about Marhum Safdar Ali Hashim. I have known him since 1972 when I first came into the country. A wonderful person, a thorough gentleman, a true mu'min. To my recollection, he was a vice president of the Jamaat at one time and served numerous times as a mukhi, a social worker of our Jamaat. In process of serving the Jamaat, he conducted himself very well, never got upset at anybody. In other words, he always maintained his cool. One time I recall very well that our Jamaat had made an appeal to the public for some funds alone to help pay off the remaining balance at the Long Island Kabristan. Silently, without any announcements, he made the funds available to the Jamaat. Like I said, a thorough gentleman in a moment. He will be indeed dearly missed by this Jamaat. We pray for his maghfara and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant sabr jameel to the bereaved family members. Last but not least, I request for Surah Fatiha for Marhum Safdarbai and his wife Marhuma Gulshan Bai Hashem and for Arwahul Mu'mineen and Mu'minat Al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum. I met uh, Marhum Safdar Hashim in uh, 1982 when I first came to this country and I was staying in uh, Elmhurst, Queens. I used to also work in uh, near, on Queens Boulevard and Safdar used to own his house just two blocks away. At that time I felt like he was a very formal person and unapproachable person. But as uh, time grew I found out that he was very approachable and a wonderful person. As far as what I can remember is that he was a very warm, kind, and the most uh, important thing is the non-confrontational person that I've ever met. He was also very honest as well. He was a man of uh, principle and he was very soft-spoken, unlike me. He was also very dedicated to his family and Jamaat and he contributed a lot which uh, many were not even aware and I only found out later. And as far as uh, services are concerned, he did serve the Sijni in a lot of capacities as a vice president, as a mukhi, as a secretary and I believe as a committee member as well. He also used to encourage the kids a lot. And I remember in one of the tenures uh, during, whether it was a committee member or a Muki position, he encouraged uh, the youths to come and paint the Husseini Madrasa in Woodside. He did tons and tons of uh, stuff. We were very lucky and fortunate enough to spend uh, many occasions at the Kebab King uh, where we used to meet a bunch of groups, I mean a bunch of friends we used to meet together and uh, we used to have a great time. I have a lot to learn Safdar from you. Um, unlike you, I can ramble on and on but in your case your silence and choice of words were amazing. You will greatly be missed by all of us and with that i would like to request you all to recite surah fatiha al fatiha a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin ar rahman Ya can I
إياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين 